Hi guys, Alice here. So we're going to start basically with week one of our eight week transformation. Um, what I'm going to go over with you now is basically uh, just getting your energy intake started and then figuring out your macros based on that. So everyone's going to be using the same basic formula. There's a lot of different ones out there. Um, I've just generated one for the eight weeks that's just really simple and easy for you to follow. So as long as you're sticking to the one regimen basically, that's all we need to do. So for week one, we're going to start with basically first up just determining your estimated energy requirements. So what I want you to do is grab a calculator and a piece of paper now. So I'll give you a little bit of time to do that. All right, so now that you've got all that stuff sorted, we're going to figure out your estimated energy requirements. So this is just your basic energy requirement without factoring any activity just yet. So we're just going to start by basically getting your body weight, so really simple, and times it by 24. So say if you're a 60 kilo female, where are we here? You're going to times that by 24 and you're getting 1,440 calories. So we're figuring out everything in calories just today because it's easier than kilojoules. If you want to do it in kilojoules, times that number um, again by 4.2. Cool, so body weight times by 24. Write that down on the top of your piece of paper. All right, next we're gonna pop in our activity factor. So some of you in the challenge are doing two sessions a week, some are doing three, some are doing four. Some of you will be doing um, extra additional sessions on top of that. I just want you to base it on resistance training. So if you're doing HIIT training, um, cardio, stuff like that, don't worry about that activity level. Let's just focus on the actual resistance-based sessions when you factor this in. So for activity now, I want you to go your physical activity level, so your PAL, times by the amount of sessions you're doing a week with resistance. So for those of you who are just doing the two to three sessions, you're just gonna times it by 1.1. If you're doing the four sessions with me, that's higher activity times it by four. Um, if you're doing any other sport that is say like a team sport that's something a bit more physically taxing, say more than an hour, also add one of those sessions in. But again, we're going for fat loss, so if we underestimate the energy, in, um, the activity level, it's a little bit better than overestimating it to keep the calories down slightly. Okay, so what we're doing with the example is we're pretending that our person um, is going to be on the activity level of the five intense sessions a week. So we're going to use that to run through. So as you go now, pop in your calories at the top and then times that by whatever activity level you've got there. Cool, jot that down on your paper. All right, so as you can see in my example here, the person was on, um, they were 60 kilos, so we times that by 2040 at 1440 calories. Exercising five intense sessions a week equals 2160 calories. All right, now for week one, this is just gonna be week one, it's gonna change slightly most weeks. We wanna go for fat loss. So we wanna have an energy deficit. We basically wanna have less energy going in more energy going out. So it's about energy balance, but also metabolism. We're just gonna keep it simple week one though, so not overcomplicating things just yet. So all I want you to do is minus 300 calories off this total here, not this total. So your total with the exercise. Okay, cool. So negative that off, we've got 1,860 calories. That's five sessions a week. So remember, if you're doing less, this number needs to be smaller. Cool. All right, now we're going to go on to weight loss goals. So realistic goals based on eight weeks um, is anywhere within this range. So 0.5 kilos or 0.5% is probably going to be a good goal. I like to focus on percent rather than kilos um, because if you're doing resistance training and you haven't done it before, you'll find you'll actually have the ability to build a little bit of muscle while you're losing weight. If you're already relatively lean, it's actually very, very tough to do the two at the same time. You'll probably just be losing body fat. So that's why we want to focus mainly on the percentages. All right. So basically also the more weight you have to shift, the easier it's going to be to drop down. You're going to drop in larger percentages each week. If you have less body fat, you're going to lose it in small increments. So just be aware of that as well. Say someone that's 30 kilos to lose, someone that's got five kilos to lose, they're going to be small increments that drop down. All right, so realistic goal about 0.5% a week, again, depending on how um, much weight you have to shift. So now what I want you to do is get your goals based on your body fat percentage. So either estimate your body fat percentage. Um, what I like to do, if you're gonna be estimating it and you haven't had time to see me for a consult just for week one, okay, so basically 10 to 15% for a female 
will be shredded. That will be like six pack, very, very lean. Um, you'll have visible abdominal muscles. You'll have um, anything under 10%, you'll be like shredded. But um, so 10 to 15%, you're going to be pretty lean, okay? So abs, seeing shape in your arms, everything like that. Um, okay, so 15 to 20% is still lean and athletic. Um, so that's kind of like my sort of off season. I'm about um, 16% at the moment. So if that gives you a good indicator. Okay, so that's still quite lean. Then 20, 25% is actually the healthy range. Um, so that would be, you would see probably no definition there. Um, 15, 20% you still see a bit of definition in your core. Um, 20, 25, a little bit softer. And 25 to 30%, you have like a bit more excessive body fat, not a lot of muscle definition at all. Okay, so then based on those, over the eight week period, then this is the amount that I'd sort of aim for you to lose. Okay, so let's pretend that my example person was 25% and we're going to roll with that. So we're going to go the upper end, that we're going to aim for about 0.75% a week to lose. Okay, this will make sense now. Cool. So we had, back to the start, get your calories. We got up to 1860 once we minus off that 300. Then five sessions a week, they're approximately 25% body fat. The goal is to lose 0.75 a week. So 0.75 times eight weeks for the challenge, 6% body fat is very realistic. So we could get this person down to about 19% body fat. It's always better to underestimate than overestimate. Um, that way, you know, if we push above it, then that's awesome. So just set realistic targets rather than having massive high expectations. And we also want to do it in a healthy way. Remember too, we want to keep the weight off after the eight weeks and if not more and continue to go on or work on their building muscle. All right. So now we're going to go on to your macros. Now that we've got that baseline caloric intake and your goals, um, percentages per week and figured out your body fat. So now you should have on your paper, um, one will be your calories minus off your ex adding in your exercise level, minus off that 300 deficit. That's number one. Number two, underneath that, you need to have a rough body fat percentage, either from seeing me or doing an estimate. Again, estimate over rather than under with the body fat. Okay, number three, then again, what percent you like to lose for that total of the eight weeks based on those realistic goals that I gave you. Cool. Now we're going on to macros. So what is a macro? These. So we've got protein. They are your building blocks. We need those. Essential. Um, they're going to help satiety, hunger, muscle growth and development. Stop you breaking down muscle tissue when you're training. We've got fat. Again, essential for your hormone development, brain function, everything. And then carbs. Okay. Carbs. A few myths around there. But we're going to keep them in there. Okay. We're going to keep them nice and high as high as we can while still losing body fat. All right, so protein yields four calories and carbs yield four calories. So they're really easy to calculate. They're going to be the same. So basically they're the same energy density. Fats are a lot more energy dense. Per gram, they're nine calories. This is all per gram. Okay, cool. So protein four, remember that fat is more, that's nine, and carbs are four again. Cool. Okay, so we're going to start with carbs. So now what I want you to do is based on basically your body fat percentage, we're going to figure out all your intakes now. Okay, so your body fat percentage is on this side here. So if our person was 25%, their carb intake is going to be 35% of their total energy for the day. Okay, so say that once more. We go 25% body fat, they're going to get 35% carbs from their diet, from their 1,860 calories. So if we go 1,860 times like 0.35, so 35%, equals 651 calories coming from carbohydrates. Okay, so remember carbohydrates are one gram um, per four. Okay, so I'm sorry, four calories for a gram. So we divide it by four, 162 grams. So that's how much carbs you're gonna have per day. Now this is on a training day because we've factored in that activity level. Cool, ignore the bottom of that slide. I'm gonna come back to that later. All right, protein now. So now make sure your carbs is on the side. You've got that number. Keep the caloric number, so for our carbs it was 651, keep that number written in a tally and 162 grams below it. Cool. So do the same thing for protein now. So if we were 25% body fat, we're going to go 30% from protein. So 18.60 again times by 0 0.3 equals 558. 
divide by four, because protein is again four calories, 140 grams of protein. So you've got 140 grams of protein, 162 grams of carbs. All right, so now the leftover is basically fats. So what you need to do then is we had 558 grams, uh, 558 cows from protein, 651 cows from carbs. Take, uh, add them up, 1,209 minus off our total energy, 1,860, that number right from the start. Leaves us with 651 grams divided by 9, because remember fat is 9 grams, uh, 9 cows per gram equals 72 grams of fat. Okay, so go back. If you didn't understand that, pause this, rewind, go back and start again. Okay, if you're confused, send me an email, give me a phone call. Okay, so remember that person was 25% body fat. So we wanted to go back to our carb slide and then want to have 35% coming from carbs. Then 20, 25% again on protein in their body fat they're going to be 30% of intake for protein. The remainder is your fats. Okay, so that person, here's their total macros. They're training five times a week. A goal is a loss of 0.75% a week, 6% over the eight-week challenge. Then we reduced off the 300 calories to allow for 1860 cows with the exercise component. Fat resulted in 72 grams, carbs resulted in 162 grams, and protein 140 grams. Okay, now, fiber down the bottom there is very important. All right, so females, I want you to go 30 to 35 grams of fiber. That's going to be included in your carbs. We're not going to have it separate. So, for example, if you have a Quest bar, people get a bit confused here, and I'm happy for you to have them. They have about 20 grams of um, carbohydrates, 17 grams of which are fiber. You're still going to count that as a total of 20 grams when you put it into here. Don't take the fiber out. Okay, so I've factored that into your carb intake. Men, try to push it up a little bit more. Let's go for about 40 grams. Um, again, if you find that your digestive system is moving too fast or too slow, then drop the amount of fiber down by about 5 grams. Cool. So that is your total macros. All right. So that was week one, estimating your energy intakes and your total macronutrient intake. So we're gonna keep it really simple for that week one. Um, what I also now wanna focus on is just getting you um, familiar with an app. So what I'm gonna get you to download is an app called MyFitnessPal. The best thing to do is actually jump on the website, um, www.myfitnesspal.com, and create your login from there. That way you can actually change your macronutrient targets online to fit what we've just figured out because the ones the computer generates for you um, aren't actually the best intakes. So they're based on dietary guidelines, um, which are a bit behind the time. So we are focusing on fat loss, so we need to hit these targets. So jump on that website. Um, I'll give you a few minutes to basically do that and then I'm gonna run you through how to use my fitness power. Um, and then we're gonna finish up with just um, some nutrient timing stuff. And that pretty much be it. All right, so jump on the website and I will talk to you in a minute.